I'll tell you what my hypnosis professor taught me, which is one of the, probably the most useful lesson you will learn anywhere at any time. And I'm going to share it with you. Are you ready for one of the most useful lessons about human beings you'll ever hear? My uh, hypnosis instructor was overweight. And people asked him about using hypnosis to quit smoking and to lose weight. And the instructor said, here's the deal, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, hypnosis does work for losing weight and it does work for quitting cigarettes. And it works in exactly the same ratio as every other method. <laughs> in other words, and, and this is how he further explained it, if somebody has decided to quit smoking or they've decided to quit weight, and the key word is decided, not wants to, not desires to, not has a goal of, but is decided. Once a person has decided, there are a lot of methods that work. Hypnosis is just one of the methods. You could use your chantix and your, your weight loss, your weight watchers. If you've made the decision, you're going to poke around until you find a method that works, and you'll probably, get, you'll probably get some good results. If you have not decided, but rather you think that the technique you are going to select will change your mind for you, that somehow the process of, I don't know, chewing the, the nicotine gum or the process of going to rehab or the process of joining Weight Watchers, if you think the process of doing those things is going to put your mind in decision mode, it's not. It's going to remove the decision from you because you're going to say, well, I'll just go through these steps and I guess something good will happen. I haven't really decided, but I've just decided to go through these processes. So that's probably the single biggest thing. Somebody has to decide that, the, that getting off the drugs is better than being on the drugs and that's a tough sale. Let me tell you from my um, stepson's um, example. W um, my ex and I tried to get him into rehab, and I did get him into rehab a few times. So rehab, of course, didn't work for him, and he went along with it because he was a minor at the time, and he sort of had to do what he was told. But he made it clear from the moment he went in that he wasn't planning on stopping. You know, he would say some words like, oh, yeah, I, I want to stop doing the hard stuff, but I'm certainly not going to stop drinking. I'm cer certainly not going to stop, you know, smoking marijuana because I don't want to be alive and not be able to party. And he said that directly and often. He said, I prefer death to a life where I can't hang out with my friends, have some beers, smoke some pot. He said it often, and he said it credibly. And he never, he never got off of that. And every time that we took him someplace where he could get clean for a while, he would tell us directly, uh, when I come back, of course I'm going to be drinking, and of course I'm going to you know, probably smoke cigarettes, and of course I'm going to smoke marijuana, because those things are so bad. And everybody does that, and that's just being a normal, normal young person. And of course, everybody tried to convince him that that's addict talk, that if he doesn't understand that doing those other things guarantee he will do the, the harder stuff, if he doesn't understand that, no rehab can help you, you know, you're, you're basically on your way to death. So his death came as, unfortunately, no surprise because he told us a system and a strategy that didn't guarantee he would have an overdose, but it made it very likely. And um, that's the path he went. So somehow we have to get past the deciding to do it. And I don't know how to do that.